Afternoon folks and welcome back to another edition here from Alcomoto Workshop and we're going to carry on the theme here from last week where we stripped down the rear wheel on the Sports the 48 and uh, we're going to go a little bit deeper in depth now with other things we can do on the restoration over the winter period and uh, general maintenance for your bike. Now the first thing we're going to do is address the, uh, the strut covers. Now I've had a couple of people ask me on removing those because they can be a bit of a pain and I'm taking mine off anyway just to do a bit of paint correction and uh, this one's for you Connor uh, Murphy and we're going to show you how to do that now thanks for all you new subscribers as well there's plenty to come on the channel obviously it's winter at the moment and ride outs are a little bit few and far between with the weather and also because the UK is still on uh, lockdown number three so we can't even go out for a ride so coming uh, over the next few months on the channel we have another 3.3 gallon tank to paint uh, for a customer and you know who that is if you're watching this right now um, we'll reveal that one at a later date uh, the Honda CB400 tank which is ready for the final coat we're just waiting for the uh, water slide decals to come down with the owner but again because it's locked down at the moment we can't do that vlog because we can't mix with uh, so called strangers uh, so that one again is in the pipeline just to keep anyone updated who's uh, looking forward to the last vlog on that paintwork series for that particular tank. So we'll bring it a little bit close because what we've done is while the, the rear wheel's off it gives you uh, time just to do a little bit cleaning up, polishing up and general maintenance while it's off the bike is so much easier. So we'll just bring you guys a little bit closer after the intro. Okay, so I'll point out now what we've done is we've done a little bit of polishing on the brake rotor itself, uh, just cleaning that up. And again, we've just gone over the Avon AV72 Cobra, lettering with the gold pen just to brighten that and clean the wheel at the same time. So that now, apart from just cleaning out inside of the bearing housing and then putting some high temperature grease back in there, and you only need a smear, but we're going to do that and cover that when the wheel goes back on. Uh, that wheel then is finished so again as you can see down here we've got the pot of copper grease which is any mechanics best friend that's for all your holes and your mounting points uh, to go back on all your bolts when you've done them now I've prepped these ready to go back on you can see we've polished these uh, bolts up on the tops on every one of those so they're all ready to go back on uh, and again, we'll cover that when the bike gets put back together. So again, now we have the EBC double H centered brake pads for the rear uh, to match the front ones. So they're going back on as well. So there's plenty of things uh, happening now for the uh, forthcoming next fortnight now on the bike. So what we're going to just cover today is obviously I've got this loose as well, but that's coming off anyway. But this is a common thing on a Sportster. So we'll show you why that comes loose before removing these strut covers. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just remove the bobbins. So it's a 3 key if you've got the quick release bobbins for a quick release sissy bar on your bike. And 13 mil spanner on the back but I have found in the past that depending on whether you've got the longer screws in the forward mounts that they can be a different size with these 3 sixteenths at the back and yet we've got a 5mm metric one at the front so it all depends on what hardware you've got with the bike so just make sure you've got uh, enough spanners in your collection to cover that the 
reason I leave these jobs until the rear wheel is off is because they are an absolute pain to get your hands in uh, to get at the rear nuts to remove these. And obviously with it out of the way, it's so much easier to do so. And also because you've got the indicator in the way, that's not helping matters, but you only need to just nip it Spin that nut off and pull out that rear bobbin. And again, this one now will be a five millimeter. Okay. So we can see now there's a little bit of movement in these, but we can't do anything until we remove the indicator themselves. out this is an absolute nightmare you, you shouldn't attempt this at least with the rear wheel and if you jack it up and let the swing arm drop a bit you don't get enough movement unless you release the shockers so it's always best just to remove the rear wheel and make it so much easier for yourself okay so now we just released that one and took the nut off the back with the seat off you can see the wire into each of the indicators and rear lights okay so with this plug here we just need to release that find the other one for the other side which is there and unplug those and then these now are the wires we need to take out the plugs to enable you to pull that right through and then out through the hole if they just made the hole a little bit bigger you'd have been able to put that through without taking it off but you'll see why when I take those off. Okay so we'll go ahead now and remove the plugs. Okay so to remove these Molex plug wiring from your rear indicators or uh, any other Molex plug on your bike first of all and there's not a lot of room here they don't give you a lot of room to play with on these wires so it's quite awkward but first off if you take a big safety pin no need for any specialist tools this does the job just as well as any tool you can buy specifically for the task and then if you look here we've got a cover you need to lift that cover up like so okay we'll just zoom in on that so if you lift that and then you can see the pins for the wires. So it's always handy, just remember to take a photograph of which way the wires go inside the plug. So the way I do it, you can either do it from the back there where it's just flat or where you've got the push release connector here. So take a photograph so you know which way they're gonna go. So if you take your safety pin and you'll see that's where your pins are at the bottom and at the top you've got this sort of like a, a T-shaped hole. So what you have to do is just press down immediately inside the hole and then a little bit of pressure and that allows you to draw the wires out. Okay, that's one. Two. Three. And four. 
and there we go. So the good thing about doing it this way is you can just clean those pins up with a little bit of emery cloth and put a little bit of uh, electrical grease on there when you put it back together and that'll stop it from going a bit green and save you from any electrical problems you might have in the future. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do the other one. So we've already lifted the cap up there. And again, just push in and then pull out. Push in. And out you come. As easy as that. Okay, so that's the plugs off. Okay, so that bit can be a little bit fiddly, uh, so any questions if you struggle with that, drop me a message. But once you've had a go a few times, believe me, it's quite a simple process. Uh, so it just saves cutting them wires and having to re-solder. And if you don't possess a soldering iron, then it saves doing that job. And like I said, you can clean the pins up and put a bit of grease in the, in the contacts before you put them back together uh, just to prevent any of that uh, greening of the wires in the future. Keep those electrics nice and sweet. So now we've just got to pull them wires through to the indicators and pull the indicators off themselves. Okay, so underneath your mud guard you have a series of clips. And we can pull that wiring through from that one. Release it from the clip underneath. Okay, so you can just see where the wiring is there now, just focus on that. Get the light right up there for you. And once you've taken the wiring, which is just going through that sheath off the clip, you can pull that through. Right, now we have the wire hanging down, we can pull that right off and that's as easy as that. But what I will show you is when you have the loose indicator on your strut or just from the head, the reason being is you can see now why, because that nut on the back of here, on the back of your strut, tightens independently of what holds it on with a nut from the back. So when you take that nut off, then take that up, then you can tighten your loose indicator. Now if I just release that, okay, and then you can see how that wobbles like so. So the only way to tighten that is by taking the strut cover off yourself and then tightening that up independently okay so if we release that one now just be careful because that will drop out and we can pull the wire in through and that is it So there we go, now we can do the paint correction on that one and just all we've got to do now is take the other side off and we're done for today. Okay with this side you can see that it's actually wound off and left the stud onto the strut itself which isn't a problem, just be careful when you take it off because it'll all come loose in three pieces like so. We can pull that off. And again, and this is why you need to remove the plugs themselves. The hole there will not allow for the plug to go through. So you have to take the plug off to let it pass through the strut cover itself.
okay and the reason I'm doing these again is because you can see where the bag the saddle bags were rubbing uh, from the last trip to Scotland after I painted them last year so we're just doing a bit of paint correction on these before we put them back together and again that is why your indicators uh, do feel loose sometimes because of this not being tightened actually onto the strut itself okay Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that vlog and I uh, hope you've learned something from that. As I say, it's very fiddly if you've never removed those strut covers before on your bike. And I hope that guide shows you how. And especially removing those Molex plugs from the wiring, which can be an absolute pain if you don't know how. But it saves cutting them off and saves you a bit of time uh, in the long run when you put the bike back together. So, all we've got to do now, in the week, I'm going to run through uh, paint correction on those strut covers. Uh, so they'll be ready hopefully then for next week and where we can put the bike back together, re-grease everything so I'll show you guys what grease I use for the bearings and all the little bits and pieces for your uh, pre-winter uh, maintenance checks on your bike. When we put the bike back together, installing the rear brake pads, EBC, sintered pads to match the front. So we're going to put those on and put everything back together, readjust the belt assembly so I'll show you how to get that rear wheel back in line as well. So there's some great tips coming next week. And then looking for the future, then we've still got that uh, custom tank to do for well, Stuart, if you're out there watching, and uh, we'll start that one very soon for you. We've got the tank, the Honda tank to finish off still, so as soon as we can uh, you know, mix with people again here in the UK, we're gonna get that finalized. And then we've got a major custom paint job with full set of tins coming in the near future as well. So stay tuned, folks, hopefully, We'll keep you busy throughout these, this period until we can start riding again and then we're back on the road. But until then folks, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed and I'll catch you next time. Alkamoto is signing out.